I am a whistleblower speaking out against the unethical practices at Orchard House Family Services. I wish to remain completely anonymous because being found out might result in trouble. I am choosing not to disclose any information that will identify me. If you don't know what Orchard House is, it's a family assessment unit. Family assessment units are residential institutions appointed by the courts or children's services to assess parenting capability. A small number of families will self-refer through children's services believing that they will receive help and support around their parenting. Orchard House is two big houses with around six bedrooms per house with shared living areas and shared kitchen and bathroom facilities. There is also an office headquarters called Canyon Lodge, away from the main houses where workshops, contact sessions, interventions and psychological assessments are carried out. Families are cared for by a team of staff known as Family Support Workers or FSWs. The houses are fitted with 24-7 CCTV footage where they are monitored by the FSW team from an office inside the house night and day. Some families have an FSW present in the room with them at all times. Families are expected to try and live like they would at home whilst being monitored by the staff team. The FSW team will write up daily logs which are then sent to a team of social workers. Each family has one or more selected social workers assigned to them who they will meet with on a regular basis. Families will carry out workshops and interventions at Cannon Lodge. The social workers form conclusions from the daily logs and reports from any interventions done at Cannon Lodge and they type up weekly reports on the families and then a final report which is used in the court's recommendation for the future of the children as to whether or not they will stay living with their parents. This all sounds like it could be a useful tool on the surface, but this system is seriously abused. I have noticed very clearly in my time at Orchard House that if a particular family is disliked by professionals or FSWs, they will not go home together regardless of their parenting capability. I would say that in my experience, Around three-quarters of families are separated due to Orchard House's recommendations. I have seen families separated simply because they disagree with simple parenting methods suggested by the FSW team and professionals. Most of them can actually look after their children just fine. They are no worse than a great deal of parents who safely care for their children independently in the community. The imperfections in their parenting are often common within the general population. Maybe they feed their children too many crisps, or they let their child watch more TV than your average kale-eating middle-class sanctum mummy would like. I actually only see a small number of parents who genuinely cannot care for their children in comparison to the ones that I have no genuine concerns about. If I had to take a guess I would say less than a quarter of parents who leave without their children are a genuine threat to them. The families who do go home under Orchard House's recommendations are generally middle class or liberal single mothers, who have the same mindset, beliefs and parenting style as the professionals and naturally agree with everything they say, to are all liberal. Females. Fathers are treated like dirt as are families that are seen as uneducated low class or disobedient any threat or lack of that they post to their children is secondary many women arrive at orchard house in a loving committed relationship with a man and they are asked to leave him by the social work team there is often nothing dangerous about said man professionals just dislike him a common one that social workers like to use is failure to read a child's cues this translates to that if you don't agree with professionals about absolutely everything, that you somehow don't understand what your child wants or needs. I frequently see an incredibly disturbing trend of professionals shaping and even outright changing their current views about a family based on hearing the negative rhetoric or opinion of other professionals. I have caught FSWs lying about families saying disparaging and cruel things about families to one another and setting families up. Even when FSWs have written positive daily logs, the social workers have taken what they wanted from those logs and have used their own negative rhetoric to twist and distort things to fit their own agenda, giving FDWs a limited input.
There are two particular social workers at Orchard House who are especially vindictive. They will go above and beyond to write reports in the most negative light possible about anyone whom they deem as disobedient, uneducated or inferior. They seem to display a high degree of contempt for families who arrive at Orchard House with few exceptions. They will include character assassination in these reports. They often show obvious signs of entertainment and pleasure when this inevitably results in drama. Let's call them Shannon and Jennifer. One social worker, an older lady who has worked there for many years obviously suffers from paranoia. She will constantly panic and come up with detailed imaginary scenarios of what risk a child might possibly face, generally without credible evidence. She will take one and two and come up with ten. I believe that this woman possibly has a mental health problem. She doesn't seem as deliberately vindictive as some of the other social workers, and she seems to generally believe her delusions. Let's call this woman Nina. Shannon, Jennifer and Nina seem to be the most commonly appointed social workers. There is also another social worker there who seems to take on a reasonable caseload but perhaps not as much as the other three, let's call her Leanne. Leanne is probably the least malignant of the bunch. Overall I have seen her send more families home than most of the others. When she writes reports alone, she is often fairer and more balanced than the other social workers, but when she works on cases with Nina, Shannon, and Jennifer, she will always shape her opinion to fit theirs and she never stands up to them. Orchard House will often employ additional people from the wider staff team to act as social workers if they are feeling understaffed. I don't know how qualified these people are, but they are generally not on the HCPC. I have witnessed several professionals working under protected titles when they are not registered with the HCPC. The CCTV evidence might as well not exist for all it's worth. None of it is kept as evidence and it all gets deleted not long after the end of the assessment. Family court judges often hang on the word of the orchard houses psychologists and social workers. The psychological reports are often psychobabble. A good example, is one family I know of, who did not go home together, because the parents were not openly emotional enough. Another example was of a family whose children didn't seem to be having fun when they were playing with one another. I also know other families whose children had behavioral problems, congenital ones like autism and ADHD, and this was used against them to separate the children. I have seen Orchard House social workers actively go out of their way to disagree with independent professionals who are far more qualified than they are in regards to disabled or struggling children because they would rather blame parents and the opinion of said qualified professional doesn't further that agenda. The nature of Orchard House is incredibly demoralizing and traumatic for families. Family assessment centers need to be closed down. These places inevitably lead to the abuse of power. Unfortunately most families who have been sent there do not get a choice to opt out. The fact that things like this exist in modern-day Britain is a disgrace.